All right. Good afternoon, Bears from all around. How's everybody doing? I hope, uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Just wanted to say um, welcome. It is My name is Greg Fansler. I am the Executive Director of Engagement Alumni Relations and Head of the Alumni Association here in Springfield and at Missouri State. Um, I want to thank you all for joining us this afternoon and, and welcome to the second edition of our 10-part series, Conversations with the College. Uh, this series was created to give alumni the opportunity to connect with and hear from our college teens and the Vice President of Student Affairs. It also provides you, alumni, the opportunity to hear what is happening on campus today within our respective colleges, as well as provide insight um, and to hear insight about what the future holds for MSU. And finally, um, the purpose of this webinar is really to, uh, is, is another reason, is to illustrate the impact our alumni and friends have had on each of our academic units throughout, throughout our Onward Upward campaign. And this, of course, translates into new buildings, scholarships, professorships, and much more. I'd like to thank Angie Rowe, our Advancement Strategic Communications and Content Specialist for her help and coordination of the series. And I would also like to thank all of the Bears who registered to participate and be part of this presentation today. We have five different states represented from Missouri, of course, uh, to, to Texas, to Arkansas, Illinois, and Georgia. Welcome, and uh, thanks for spending your afternoon or your lunch hour with us this afternoon. And now I'd like to turn it over to Dean Sean Wall and introduce him. Uh, Sean has been with the university for coming up on his 10th anniversary. He has served as dean since 2017 and was the interim dean for two years prior to that. Prior to um, his interim deanship and you know, eventually becoming dean in 2017, he was also the department head of communication in the School of Communication and Studies at Missouri State. And prior to him coming to Missouri State, he was the head of the Department of Communication, Mass Media and Theater at Angelo State University. He also served as the director of graduate studies at Texas A&M University, Corpus Christi. Sean has three degrees, um, his Bachelor of Arts in Speech and Master's of Arts and PhD in Speech, Communication and Rhetoric. He received his Bachelor of Arts from Angelo State University, his Master's from Texas Tech University, and his PhD in Communication and Speech and Speech, Communication and Rhetoric in 2003 from the University of Lincoln, uh, University of Nebraska at Lincoln. Sean, uh, Thank you for being with us this afternoon and for and for sharing um, all that's happened at the Reynolds College of Arts and Letters. Um, we're looking forward to going on this 30 minute journey with you. For those of you here with us, um, after after Sean goes through his presentation in about 30 minutes, we'll be done. He'll be done and we're gonna open the floor up to questions from you. So please, um, as, as you hear what Sean shares with you, or if there's other questions you have, um, please chat them or use the Q&A function and, and we'll, we'll um, We'll, we'll have that opportunity for you to engage with Dean Wall here in, in a handful of minutes. Dean Wall, please take it away. Thanks, Greg, and uh, thanks to all of your colleagues at the Missouri State University Foundation for uh, organizing and launching the Conversations with the College series. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity to uh, talk about things going on uh, within the Reynolds College of Arts and Letters. Uh, I would like to start off by uh, giving kind of an overview of the programs that are uh, that are in the college. So we have three premier arts programs and the three programs, I know that uh, some of the audience members are familiar, but we have the uh, Department of Art and Design, the Department of Music, as well as the Department of Theater and Dance. And then we have uh, a series of letters programs. We have the Department of English, the Department of Modern and Classical Languages, and also the School of Communication Studies that houses the Department of Media, Journalism, and Film, and the Department of Communication Studies, which is home of the uh, Spicer Debate Forum. So that's uh, really exciting to have our debate team that has a long history. Uh, in the next uh, few minutes, what I'd like to do is share uh, what I call uh, structural updates. We have a tremendous amount of progress that's been made across all of our academic programs, across all of our facilities at the university, but particularly the impact on students in terms of our renovation related to our strategic investments. And all of those things have been supported by our alumni, by the Missouri Foundation, uh, with our Onward Upward campaign, and uh, overall sort of want to tell a story of the progress that we made 
Uh, all the work really started before 2017, but really the journey has, has really evolved from 2017 forward. And so I'll uh, provide an update on a few exciting uh, new facilities and expansions that we've made that support the entire university, but particular the Reynolds of College of Arts and Letters. So the first part of the story is about our renovation of Ellis Hall and becoming an all Steinway school. Uh, Ellis Hall, when you look back uh, well over five years ago, uh, Ellis Hall really was in the need of help. So we completed a $14 million renovation, state-of-the-art music facilities. It's really one of, uh, we have many beautiful facilities on campus, but the impact that Ellis Hall, the new Ellis Hall has had on our music programs, supporting pre-college learning experiences across academic programs has been tremendous. And as the story goes, we had a brand new multi-million dollar renovated facility, uh, but the, the issue was we had old pianos. So we had to finish the dream. So through the support of donors, friends, people across uh, the entire Missouri State University community, we put together a multi-layered uh, collaborative funding model that made becoming an all Steinway school a reality. And so uh, just a few years ago, uh, I'll never forget that day. And I'm so grateful uh, to the, the leadership of uh, President Cliff Smart, uh, our provost, Dr. Frank Einholig, uh, definitely champions of all academic programs. And we were able to officially celebrate uh, the all Steinway school sat status just a few short years ago. So what that does is an example of private money and support of, of, of facilities that helps us recruit highly qualified and diverse students and continue to expand to train teachers for the future to serve all of Missouri uh, and beyond. Another example of our facilities is uh, a little bit more recent. You know, if you visualize those of you who uh, haven't been on campus and even recent, uh, recently as of the past few months, uh, Ellis Hall uh, is just a transformation uh, of campus. Uh, the tent pad was a, a great site that, uh, you know, people like, uh, you know, I'm thinking of Howard Orms, uh, B. Blackwood. Uh, we have such a, a rich history when we look at uh, tent theater, but also uh, the opportunity to create uh, an arts park and a facility that's gonna benefit the entire uh, Missouri State University community for years to come. So I'm pleased to announce that uh, just about a year ago, we had uh, an official uh, groundbreaking ceremony uh, to break ground on the John Goodman Amphitheater, uh, which is truly a transformation. Um, I'm grateful because my office is in Craig Hall. And so I look out the window and get to see the progress that's being made every day. And as we finish the project in calendar year 22, uh, the John Goodman Amphitheater will be home to 10th Theater uh, and will also be surrounded by the Judith and your Reynolds Arts Park. And so uh, we're gonna uh, be making a, a special announcement uh, today or possibly tomorrow, uh, a press release will, will uh, be shared about our 10th Theater season and about the overall progress on this new facility. So we've just uh, included a couple of uh, couple of images. Here's another rendering of the facility. And you, as you can see from this image here, it's just a game changer in the experience of campus. And we know that facilities and the overall, um, just the overall quality of facilities and the grounds of any, any university, that that's, uh, that's important. That's about uh, recognizing um, uh, the needs of our students celebrating the legacy and success of our alums. And so this just adds to beautiful spaces like the fountain that's outside of Meyer Library and can't wait for uh, this particular uh, construction project and investment in the future of the university to, to come to life. So we'll uh, move forward. Uh, here's another update that's, uh, if you're visualizing sort of a, a different section of campus, and this is really a reflection on and an update of what's going on downtown. So a number of years ago, looking at 2013, we were able to secure Brick City as a premier uh, space for our art and design program. And to have Brick City and 
to have a, a terminal degree, which is the Master of Fine Arts and Visual Studies. When you look at the continued success of all of our art and design programs, uh, it's part of downtown Springfield. And when you look at traditions in the community, such as Sculpture Walk Springfield, First Friday Art Walk, those are all things that situate the university as part of the new vision of downtown Springfield. So uh, as we move forward and we look at the daylight, daylighting of uh, Jordan Creek Project, uh, the Corolla Arts Exhibition Center that's located right across the street or right around the corner from Brick City, this is at uh, 326 North Boonville. This was uh, something that uh, wouldn't have happened without uh, champions. And so um, we really are grateful to uh, Robert and Margaret Corolla for supporting this facility. We're looking forward to in the summer of 2022 to have a celebration and an official naming of this particular facility. And so when you look at uh, recent First Friday art walks and you look at the benefits that students have with our BFA exhibitions, our MFA studios, just another investment in the future um, of the university and uh, just overall a, a game-changing transformational addition uh, to the arts that benefit the students of Missouri State University, but also uh, connect to our long-range plan and celebrate the history when you look at community partnerships, when you look at how important the university is as it intersects with uh, the citizens of, citizens of Springfield and beyond. So those are just a couple of uh, facility updates. One of the things that, uh, that I'm really excited about, and I think of the Missouri Fine Arts Academy as a legacy program. We have so many alums from this particular pre-college learning experience that uh, you know, this is just part of the arts and letters story. And so uh, during the pandemic, we uh, were challenged and many of our programs on campus, but we uh, are pleased to announce that many applications uh, uh, are continuing to arrive and we're preparing to put our team together of uh, local faculty and people from across the region uh, to roll out the 2022 Missouri Fine Arts Academy. Part of this story also connects to the work of the foundation and the Onward Upward campaign, and also uh, people who, um, who planned their, uh, you know, when you look at uh, planned gifts, uh, that's so important to the university. And so in recent weeks, uh, we signed a six-figure gift uh, in support of the Missouri Fine Arts Academy. And that's just one gift that we've recently uh, received that helps the Missouri Fine Arts Academy's future uh, that we maintain affordability and that we're able to give students an opportunity from rural sections of the state um, and from the larger cities, whether that's St. Louis, Kansas City, um, the entire region when you're looking at giving students a chance and giving students an opportunity to engage um, in an on-campus uh, on learning experience is tremendous. And one of the things that I love about the legacy of the Missouri Fine Arts Academy is we have uh, students who may not necessarily come to Missouri State and major in arts and letters. They may end up majoring in political science. They may end up going into business, teaching in, in a variety of disciplines. But all of the testimony and the stories that are there for many, many years uh, are, are so inspiring when you look at the, the outcomes and the impact that pre-college programs like the Missouri Fine Arts Academy have um, on, on the citizens of our state and beyond. And so really looking forward to the return of MOFA in uh, 2022. A few other things that uh, I'd like to share uh, are inspired by uh, the naming of the college. In 2022, we received the largest scholarship gift in the history of Missouri State University to name the college, the Judith Enyart Reynolds College of Arts and Letters. And I'll never forget that day. It was in the, the middle of the pandemic. So many things were closed, but the Reynolds gift uh, really fulfills, and, and I've enjoyed writing about this story um, over the past couple of years, but the Reynolds gift is transformational because it supports uh, personal dreams as well as structural dreams. And so we've talked about 
uh, the impact that private money has on arts facilities, on other facilities across academic affairs and, uh, and across different aspects of campus. But the Rental Scholars Program is about changing lives. And we have the third cohort of Rental Scholars students who are uh, preparing to come to the university with a comprehensive scholarship. And what is so special about this particular scholarship gift is that it benefits all seven departments within the Reynolds College of Arts and Letters. And so uh, cohort one, tremendous group of students, we're celebrating cohort two, they're finishing their first uh, spring semester, and we're actively uh, in conversation with, uh, with the future class of Reynolds scholars. And again, this is just amazing in that it gives people a shot, it supports affordability and it, and and I'll share as a first generation student myself this is the type of gift that gives an opportunity to people who otherwise uh, would not necessarily have the resources uh, to go to college and I know that that's part of the the overall uh, uh, vision and mission of this particular gift uh, the the naming of the college also supports structural dreams and so when you look at the Judith Enyart Reynolds Arts Park, uh, in concert with the other facilities I've talked about over the past few minutes. Uh, again, it just shows uh, the commitment of our alumni community and how private money inspires uh, the Missouri State University community. Uh, to move on to a couple of other examples in terms of uh, how private support can impact education in profound ways, we also have the Reynolds Guest Artist Fund. We've had a series of guest artists who have experience in a variety of things. The, the first part or the first impact of the Reynolds Guest Artist Fund is this year focused on the Department of Theater and Dance. And so we have industry actors, dancers, people from all over the nation who are in professional jobs, who are able to come and visit with our students, facilitate master classes, partner with our faculty, and, and those things are so important across all academic uh, programs of the whole university. But for our students to work with people who can share their story of auditioning or taking the, uh, I'll just use musical theater or a, or a major in art, to be able to take those skills with an arts and letters degree and go into other industries to set up to be successful in business, to be, to, to be successful in establishing um, and supporting nonprofit organizations across, across the nation. Can't uh, uh, emphasize enough how important private money has uh, in giving the university the ability to bring in uh, industry professionals uh, as we focus on uh, job placement uh, uh, after college. Uh, another example that we'll move forward to is uh, one of our uh, new academic programs. Uh, part of the long range plan emphasizes the evolution and establishment of academic programs for the future. So as we look across academic colleges, we see progress in developing and offering professional doctorates. And the other part of that is that we're also able to offer uh, the MFA as a terminal degree. So the Reynolds College has two MFA programs. One is the Master of Fine Arts in Visual Studies. And many of the MFA studio spaces are actually housed in the new Corolla Art Center that I shared a few minutes ago. And I'm really proud of another terminal degree uh, MFA program that was launched uh, just a few years ago. It's a three year program, but I'm pleased to share that the MFA and dramatic, dramatic writing program that's housed within the Department of Media, Journalism and Film. We have our second uh, cohort of students who are uh, finishing their academic experience this year, while some of those will move into a third year. It's really exciting because as we approach uh, May 22 commencement, the success story here is that students were able to take graduate credit from certificates established in the, in the, in the graduate college under Dean Julie Masterson to partner with programs uh, across all of the academic colleges to utilize certificate credit as a pathway for student graduation. And so we have the first set, I'm so excited about this, we have the first set of, of MFA students in this program 
who will be hooded in May 22. And we have expectations. We have uh, degree completion goals uh, that uh, you know, all state universities are held accountable for. And so the graduates in May 22 project this program into the future where we've met our first degree completion goals. And, and that's just so exciting uh, to be able to share the success of one particular graduate program. So that's a little bit of an update uh, on our academic programs. And uh, I wanna talk a little bit about, talk to, about graduate students and with the example of the MFA programs uh, as a part of our long range plan. But endowed profess professorships and private money in support of our, our faculty and staff are essential. And so uh, we were pleased to uh, offer three smart professorships within the Reynolds College of Arts and Letters. Uh, Dr. Cameron Labar, a phenomenal director of choral activities, uh, is the smart professor of music. Uh, Dr. Etta Madden, a uh, smart professor of English. And uh, last but not least, we have uh, Lisa Brescia, a smart professor of musical theater. And so overall, wanted to provide a, a survey uh, to show uh, the benefits of our alumni community, uh, friends of the university, and how that helps the uh, helps Missouri State move forward uh, in positive ways as we uh, look uh, for various resources and strategies to complete, uh, successfully complete uh, the university long range planned uh, from current to 2026. So uh, that's a little bit of uh, an update on some things going on in the Reynolds College. And I uh, look forward to turning it over to Greg and uh, uh, engaging in some discussion and conversation. Dean Wall, thank you. Uh, thank you for your time and for this update. Um, you, you mentioned the MFA program. Is there, um, are there other academic um, department majors that you foresee coming into the future as in, in your long-term vision for what the Reynolds College of Arts and Letters was going to be and, and, and what, what can alumni expect to see as they may be having students who are interested in, in coming to um, and enroll at, at, here at Missouri State and particularly in your college? Yes, uh, in addition to the uh, MFA in visual studies and the MFA in dramatic writing, we also have uh, actually programs that have been uh, uh, been successful for many years. And so I, uh, I think of the Master of Arts in Communication. That's uh, a program that students either land in, uh, in professional jobs. Many of the MA in Communication students are going on to PhD programs. Some of the uh, graduate assistantships uh, within that program uh, tend to work uh, for the debate program, uh, which I believe the Spicer uh, Debate Forum is, uh, is clearly a legacy uh, program at the university. And so I'm pleased to report that the MA in Communication, we continue to have uh, a, uh, a robust uh, residential program uh, with the MA. We do have uh, online options for certificates uh, and other uh, more professional focused programs. I'm thinking of uh, our uh, applied communication, uh, master of professional studies, uh, which is uh, a great path pathway for a student to earn a certificate first and then consider applying to the MA in communication or, or other graduate uh, program offerings across the university. Uh, also in the Department of English, uh, the Master of Arts in English is uh, continues to be tremendous. We have uh, a really great team of graduate teaching assistants that mentor students in uh, public speaking, our writing program. Um, just to, to refer to a few faculty, you know, I'm thinking of uh, you know, Dr. Margaret Weaver, uh, Dr. Leslie Seawright, Dr. Rhonda Stanton. I mean, those are just, you know, three examples of faculty who are mentoring our graduate students um for uh for just incredible futures and so those are a few graduate program examples but you know i think of the success of our of our professional writing students uh the job placement rate for professional writing students is tremendous and you know i'm thinking of uh of an alum who who i stay in touch with who is uh who's been extremely successful uh, with a combo degree, you know, master a master's degree in professional writing, um, undergraduate degree in 
uh, communication. I believe a double major in communication in English. And uh, that's just one example of someone who's working in uh, instructional design, a uh, really solid salary. Uh, the same is true for our undergraduate students and uh, correlations and the like. So those are just a few examples. Exciting for the professional side of the house, Sean, and certainly good things coming at the undergraduate level. Um, speaking of the undergraduate level, what what is the current um, demographic profile, um, and what what is a typical student? Um, what, what what is their academic rigor as they come into the college, and um, and then I guess in the majors that they're in, what are you seeing employers um, thirsty for, and um, what majors may have a stronger demand than another? Well, I, I think that you know when you look at the uh, the number of students within the Reynolds College, uh, historically we have uh, between two thousand and uh, twenty five hundred majors. Uh, I think that our uh, our partnership across academic colleges, we have a, a good partnership with the Career Center, and so uh, we really do emphasize job placement and pathways to job placement, and so. Uh, one thing that's in action with our current long range plan is we continue to develop community partnerships. And I think that's true for all seven departments with, within the Reynolds College. So you have, uh, I'll give one example. Uh, we have students who might uh, be majoring in media journalism and film. Um, let's say it's a focused journalism student. We have journalism students who are uh, part of our partnership with the, uh, the Daily Citizen. That's uh, a project, a community project that we, we've announced recently. And uh, it's just tremendous for students to have experience uh, like that. Um, I think that uh, something that's relatively new, we look forward to our uh, partnership with Amazon. Um, there, there's so many things that, that we're doing to really focus on, you know, uh, going, going beyond the pathway of uh, what, what is the first year What's the first year experience? Then you get mm -hmm. to the second year. Uh, what are what are opportunities for education abroad? And in the way that we talk about it, it's uh, and we're talking more and more about this in terms of student success across the university. But what does what does a major map look like that helps a student with uh, the curricular offerings, but also a pathway uh, post graduation, uh, career placement, coaching prior to career. Uh, that's something that uh, I'm thinking of our career career center. Uh, you know, one of my colleagues, Kelly Rapp, they do a tremendous job at look at looking at uh, success of students uh, after graduation, and, and we want that we want that experience to occur, those high impact learning experiences to occur to prepare our students not only for job placement but also to set them up to apply to graduate programs and to possibly stay. Uh, to stay at Missouri State to complete a graduate certificate uh, that'll help them in industry across industries, um, but also uh, possibly pursue professional doctorates, master's programs, uh, or, or PhDs and, and other, uh, other um, possibilities like law school and medical school. Um, and and those, those stories exist across all academic uh, programs at the university. Well, you, you mentioned experience um, and, and what they can provide just next week, actually. I know your theater and dance department students are, are splitting the country and some are going to New York uh, to to connect with bears and, uh, who are who are in the in the Broadway theater um, industry. In fact, one is actually launching a brand new um, um, Broadway show that the students will get to see as it and it's one of its initial um, debut plays. And then and I think another group's going to be in LA uh, to connect with, with folks in, um, in, in the movie business. And I know that I'll be there for that and connecting with Lisa Bres um, Bresky. So certainly opportunity uh, abound for students to, to continue to, um, um, to have this unique opportunity to connect with alumni in the field. I think it's special uh, that your faculty are out there. Um, when we were in the Missouri Valley Conference um, tournament last week, Certainly, the, the Pride Band is alive and well. Um, is there are there any talking points you'd like to share about um, what's happening in, in, in these two parts of the um, of your college and department? Yes, I think the examples that, that you used with the uh, the uh, musical theater events we've had uh, it shows that we have a 
um, a really strong alumni network uh, in mm -hmm. New York and in other areas like DC. And I, I think the alumni events, especially um, my time uh, attending uh, the, uh, the showcase in New York City, I'm so glad that we're bringing events like that back. But our, our current students have an opportunity to network with Missouri State alums. And it just shows the benefit of the work that you, you and your team and Brent done what you're doing to, to facilitate those relationships, to keep that engagement and that connection with the university, because those lead to uh, positive relationships, uh, you know, bears that are out there and working across industries are inspiring current bears. And, you know, I believe the value of, uh, you know, of alumni engagement, it's also about network, networking for jobs and giving those students that, that pathway and that experience, um, you know, in industry uh, to be successful. So, um, you know, can't say enough about, uh, you know, about those sorts of events. And then you look at our, uh, the Pride Band, um, really large band, uh, typically has 350 students. And uh, again, to use that, to use an example, and, and by the way, the, in the marching band and our choral program, those are students who, uh, who, who come from uh, all different interests. So we have business majors, uh, representatives from across academic uh, colleges uh, who were in those programs. And you're, you're asking about the band. I mean, that is a, uh, just, a just an amazing uh, network uh, that has a rich history. And, you know, to, to just see sort of automatic uh, pop-up events, uh, you know, pride band events, uh, the times that I've been to the the State Music Educators Association. I'll, I'll never forget uh, President Smart um, has presented a few times at the state convention. And when we ask for uh, the Missouri State alums at the state music convention to stand, you have hundreds of bear alums who are music teachers, principals. Um, it's just uh, it's just an I kind of I think an ideal story of the of the power of alumni and, and the relationships that we foster. So we got to keep that going, Greg. Indeed, indeed. So my last, I guess I'm running out of questions here. So please feel free to chime in for those of you on the call and, and do type in any, any questions or thoughts that you'd like to share with Dean Wall. But my my final one is kind of teeing you up for kind of how we ended in that and, and pulling a nugget out is how can alumni uh, connect with you, Sean, and in, in, um, in, in all of the good work that's happening within the Reynolds College of Arts and Letters um, how, how can they connect? What, um, what, what can they do to serve? Um, what would you recommend that they do uh, to reach out to you or, or your department heads and, and to either work with students or serve the college in some shape or fashion? Absolutely. You know, we, uh, we try to, to, to be very visible. Um, I look forward to, um, it's part of what I do and what our team does is we, we try to go to the in-person events like the, the LA event and the New York event that you just mentioned. But I, I try to share what's going on on Twitter. Um, follow President Smart on Twitter if you haven't, because he really covers the whole university. Uh, I'm on Twitter. Um, if you go to the university website and just go into the arts and letters section of the website, uh, you'll, you'll be led to all of the departments. And so um, just encourage uh, any, anyone uh, on the call today, uh, just stay in touch. Uh, we also do a a print publication of the Reynolds College magazine. Uh, the 2021 version was released in uh, December, January. Uh, so, so anything that we can do, uh, anytime you wanna come back, uh, our, we have some just incredible events when you look at homecoming, uh, the uh, celebration events, the success of our Onward Upward campaign, lots of amazing things to celebrate in the coming months. And uh, any, also anytime you wanna come back, um, just let people know that we, you know, we're open to, uh, to hosting alums for whether it's uh, campus updates, tours, performances, or if you have something you want to share, any of our alums want to share in terms of recruiting uh, for, uh, for employment opportunities, uh, to uh, present master classes across academic areas and topics, uh, we're, we're open to all of that. So reach out anytime if you have any questions, follow me on social media, uh, happy to help. Okay, thank you, Sean. And then I think there will be an announcement coming out soon. I, I've heard that the grapevine about Tent Theater coming up and some 
the alumni should be on the lookout for a press release here soon, right? Yes, I think we'll we'll be seeing uh, that should happen this week. We're going to okay. make uh, make an announcement about uh, uh, about the John Goodman Amphitheater and the season of Tent Theater. Uh, really exciting news uh, and exciting updates to share uh, uh, to share with the world. So uh, that'll be coming uh, maybe today or tomorrow. So yeah, oh wow, yeah. breaking news! Stay Absolutely. tuned, everybody. Stay tuned. All right. Well, um, I see that uh, Brent Dunn here, our Vice President for Advancement, and is has joined us. Brent, um, we we are wrapping up here. I don't have any questions right now. More to to ask Dean. While he's could he could be off the hot seat. Uh, would you like to share any words with us, uh, Brent, about the campaign? Sure. Thank you very much. Um, and this campaign is is really really exciting. It has changed the the university. Uh, a lot. And so we opened this up in 2019. Um, it was October 26th. And the goal is to raise $250 million um, for really four areas, scholarship support, um, capital support, program support, and faculty support. Uh, and of course, our chairman uh, comes from uh, uh, Sean's College, uh, John Goodman, uh, who everybody, probably our most recognizable um, alum in the world, uh, is chairing the campaign. He made a very nice gift for the amphitheater. Um, and so here, here's the date I want to make sure everybody has on their calendar, and that's October 29th of this year. That is when we close the campaign and celebrate the changes that the university has uh, experienced because of the generosity of right now, 60,000 people have made gifts uh, to the campaign. So this event is gonna be held in JQH Arena. Uh, the doors open at seven, the, the program 7.30 to, to 8.30 probably, a very high energy, uh, very fun celebratory type of event. A uh, lot of people from the College of Arts and Letters are participating. The entire Grand Chorus, the, the 300 plus member uh, Bruin Pride Band, um, and, and of course, John Goodman is emceeing. And, and we're going to have a nationally recognized recording artist, actually a Grammy award winning uh, uh, artist that will be uh, participating in this celebration uh, event as well. More on that. But um, we want everybody to be here. That is homecoming. So lots going on on campus, certainly that uh, Saturday, the football game, the parade. But then at night, we're culminating uh, that week with this very, very special uh, event uh, that will be held at JQH Arena. And John Goodman, of course, uh, is excited about this and, and has put a lot of energy in this campaign and, and he does it because he wants to see the impact on students. And, and so uh, please put that date down on your calendar. Uh, that will be a very fun event and really highlighting a lot of the, the Reynolds College of Arts and Letters. Greg? Thank you, Brent. I appreciate that update. And so we have October 29th. That's a date we're all circling right now in our calendars. But there's seven and a half months between now and then. And there's a lot to be happening between now and then. So please be on the lookout for Maroon Nation in your inbox or in your mailbox. We're coming to you through the magazine. We're coming to you in your in where you may be living in your regions. Um, I, I know that Atlanta and Texas and Chicago are represented here. We will be in your neck of the woods here in the very distant future. Um, we're excited to be back in person um, with, with Maroon Nation events coming your way. Um, so please um, come out, join us, connect, tell us um, what's what's happening, what you'd like to see in your local area. Um, would, would love to help plan events for you. There'll be a chapter network that will start to form over the summer where we're going to identify alumni in your local communities uh, to help plan events for alumni, uh, from young alumni up to service events, golf tournaments and the like. Uh, so we're, we're looking forward to being out and about. There's 135,000 bears out there. Um, thank you for those of you who joined us this afternoon to hear about the Reynolds, Arnold, the Reynolds College of Arts and Letters. Dean Wall, thank you for your time and your presentation. I uh, really appreciate um, you being here with us and connecting with alumni. Um, I think you'll see, um, for those of you who joined us in the call, 
um, the great care and stewardship that Sean's had for his college. And we're excited for what the future holds um, um, with your leadership, Dean Wall. And so um, with that, uh, we'll end a few minutes early and let you all finish your lunch for those of you who joined the call. Uh, but um, we really appreciate it. And I'm going to turn it back to Sean to give the last word. Sean, anything you'd like to share with the group? Just wanted to thank all of our participants online and um, any information that you uh, that you're interested in and across the whole college. Again, just reach out. I think we put some of the websites and everything in chat. And I know that we have some um, some people from on campus who have joined us today. So I really appreciate that. Uh, just share out any information and connect anyone who's interested um, in arts and letters uh, to me or to uh, any of our faculty, staff, or department heads. Uh, thanks again to everyone for being here today. Thank you, Dean Wall. Appreciate y'all joining. Go Bears!